Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever Max Velocity Summer 2023 weather forecast. And this is a pretty big forecast. I usually don't do things like this, but we do have an El Nino pattern coming to the country that has already begun and brought a lot of severe weather to some areas, bringing excessive droughts to other areas, massive heat waves, cooler temperatures. I'm going to break down everything that you need to know ahead of this summer in detail. And we're going to break down every single region to give you an idea of what the likely scenario is with El Nino right around the corner. But before I I show you my summer forecast i want to break down the climate prediction center's forecast for this summer which is going to be a bit different from my forecast so we're going to begin with the climate prediction center's forecast for this summer in terms of the temperatures and overall they are basically forecasting above average temperatures at least in the likelihood of above average temperatures for a large chunk of the united states the main areas with that probability will be back down into the high plains and as well as in the four corner states and across a large chunk of the country it's not just including there we're talking anywhere along the gulf coast back through the northeast that is where above average temperatures are likely but you'll notice the area with the equal chances that basically means we could see above average temperatures but we also could see below average temperatures and overall it's kind of at a 50 50 chance right now for those in the midwest and as well as back through parts of the ohio valley and the northern and central plains now my forecast is a bit more decisive it kind of gives you an idea of what i'm forecasting so i'll show you that in just a second here's the precipitation forecast for this summer so overall they're forecasting below average precipitation in the northwest united states particularly for washington or Oregon as well as Idaho and you'll notice back down in the four corner states that is where below average precipitation also looks likely that kind of correlates with the above average temperatures below average precipitation that all correlates to each other then the precipitation is likely to be above average for a large chunk of the country and in the southeast United States mid-Atlantic Ohio Valley all those areas are going to be above potentially above average for precipitation against a likelihood it's not definite but it is likely to happen in those areas over the course of the next three months and then for the remainder of the United States equal chances both ways but again i have a more decisive forecast to give you an idea of what we're looking at here across the united states and we're going to begin highlighting areas on the west coast beginning with california as well as southwest oregon back through parts of nevada southern arizona and the very furthest southwest point of new mexico this is an area that i'm forecasting a dry and hot summer so overall slightly above average for temperatures and slightly below average for precipitation this is an area that we're again we have el nino right around the corner much warmer temperatures right now in the Pacific Ocean. This is going to carry more precipitation, I think, across areas in the Central Plains as well as part of possibly the Southern Plains to start the summer, and then that'll shift further to the North, but I do think areas in the Southwest United States will overall be dry and hot. Now, for the Northwest United States, fairly small area here. It's Northern Nevada back through Washington and Oregon. This is also where I'm forecasting a fairly dry summer, so wildfire season will start to increase as we get closer to August, but it will also be warmer, so we're going to be talking about the same sort of story, but obviously warm and hot are two different things warmer is like you know 80s 70s and then hot is closer to like the 90s potentially 100s especially in arizona so that's what i'm thinking for this summer now the next area is a bit further off to the east of that that is for those in parts of the rocky mountains montana as well as wyoming northern colorado back through areas in northern utah and as well as idaho this is where i think it's gonna be a bit of a cooler start and the main reason why is because we currently have a snowpack across a large chunk of the mountainous regions and even into areas like utah we still have up upwards of 20 to 25 feet of snow on the ground right now this is an area that i do overall foresee a cooler start but i do think we're going to start to see a late summer push and what i mean by that is that i do think warmer temperatures are going to start to come into play as we get closer to the second half of the summer but i think the first half of the summer does start out around if not below average across this region we've seen so much snow here over the past several months and that snow is still there right now so it's pretty crazy stuff there and that is obviously going to keep some of those areas cooler overall now four areas in a very small region here but it's going to be for north Northwest New Mexico, back into Northern Arizona, Southern Utah, Southwest Colorado, and as well as Eastern Wyoming. This is where I think it'll be a quite active summer, at least to start with. I do think things quiet down a little bit during the middle of the summer, and then we start to ramp up again as we get closer to late August and as well as into September. I do think temperatures will be near average. If they're not near average, it will be above average. So that's kind of the range that I'm thinking there across that very small quadrant of the United States. Now, for a very large area, obviously the areas get much larger the further east you go, believe it 
it or not, but this is going to include a very large area. So we're beginning with New Mexico, the High Plains region, as well as Southeast Colorado, back into areas in North Texas, West Texas, the Panhandle of Texas, all of Oklahoma, as well as into Arkansas, and as well as Western Tennessee, Northern parts of Mississippi, and as well as Northwest Alabama. This is where I think we have a slow start to summer. So far already this spring, a very tail end of spring here, we've actually had temperatures in particular in Oklahoma, all in the 80s or lower. We've barely had any 90s so far this uh, spring. And also in North Texas, it's also been a quite a slow start. Temperatures have been in the 80s. In comparison to last year, we were already into the 100s in parts of North Texas. So it's a much slower start this year. But one thing to keep in mind, it will still be hot. We're not really changing from that. Temperatures will still get into the 80s. Temperatures will still get into the 90s. I do foresee at least a few 100s in North Texas this summer. And as well as across the rest of Texas, 100s are definitely going to be happening as well as 90s. But obviously, the overall trend here is that temperatures will still be around, if not above average, and as well as the precipitation, I think will be average. Since we're going to El Nino, weather patterns will be a bit more active here in the Southern Plains, so we will likely see a little bit more precipitation than what we saw last year, excluding Dallas, because Dallas last year saw like 16 inches of rain in one day. That is not going to probably happen this summer, but it is definitely something to watch out for. We'll probably see around average precipitation. Now, when I say average precipitation and average temperatures, that does not mean all summer long it's going to be average. We will still see below and above average temperatures at some parts of the summer. Just keep that in mind. One more note for this region, I do think overall temperatures will start as round average, and I think they'll go above average as we get closer to the later part of the summer. So sort of similar to areas in the northwest United States in that blue shaded region where it's going to be a cooler late summer push. I think there's some comparable things here across areas in the southern plains and as well as back through areas even into the Mississippi Valley. Now going further to the south in that pink shaded area, this is going to be right along the Gulf Coast, fairly small area here, but for those around Houston, Brownsville, back through Louisiana, and as well as southwest parts of Mississippi. This is where I think it's going to be a hot and humid summer and a late summer push again. So I think warmer temperatures are going to be coming later in the summer, well above average temperatures possibly. We could see even some record-breaking potential temperatures and maybe even some tropical systems. Obviously, we do have the tropics. We have to always watch that during August and September, especially along the Gulf Coast. It'll be an area to watch, but overall, I do think the hurricane season will be around average, if not just slightly above average for this year. So it'll be definitely something to watch for as well. Now, next up is the northern and central plains, that entire red shaded region. This is where we're looking at a potential for some severe weather insanity as we go into probably late June, if not into July. That is when I think things really start to ramp up across this region, especially for those on the eastern side of this region. So for basically eastern Nebraska, parts of the Dakotas into Minnesota, Iowa, and as well as Missouri. I do think severe weather starts to ramp up during that time frame. Overall, though, we're not, again, looking at widespread severe weather outbreaks over several weeks. We are just talking about the potential for a couple, if not maybe a few severe your weather outbreaks in this region during the course of again two to three months it's not gonna be an everyday thing but overall hot and humid across this region i do forecast that at least around if not above average temperatures here and likely gonna see around if not just above average precipitation i don't think it'll be below average in those regions now further off to the north and east into the midwest and as well as into parts of the northeast this is an area that i think we're going to continue to see the drought pattern and obviously for the last several weeks if you've been watching my weather forecast we have a massive ridge in this area and that is keeping areas dry and as well as much warmer. That is what I think will continue for the next several weeks, but I do think we'll start to see more of an active weather pattern as we go into the second half of summer. So around July and August, and as well as in sept into September, that is when I think things start to ramp up a bit more, and I think things get much more active. So overall, I do think this summer will end average across this region, but I do think temperatures will start above average, and as well as precipitation will start below average, and then I think things flip a little bit as we go into the later summer, possibly around average temperatures and above average precipitation for the second half of the summer, that is definitely possible there across that large area. This also includes the Ohio Valley, by the way. Now, for the next area in the southeast, this is basically the southeast area that we always see storms in, so Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, and parts of Mississippi. This is where I'm forecasting a stormy but slightly above average area for temperatures. So overall, again, fairly normal summer here, but I do think temperatures are going to be above average. That's overall a fairly normal summer in the southeast United States. But one thing to also keep in mind is that there is a chance for hurricanes or tropical storms Storm, so we have to watch for that potential as well. Again, this hurricane season is forecasted to be on round average, but I do think it might be a little bit above average. That's kind of my personal take on that right now. With El Nino, we have much stronger shear in the Atlantic Ocean, so usually any storm activity that does develop is much weaker near the United States, but we still do see some strong hurricanes, even though we have El Nino. Now, for the last part of the United States, which is a pretty large area still, this is going to extend from the Mid-Atlantic region back into parts of the Northeast. Do not forget there is actually orange here 
right along the east coast this is where i do think it's going to be an overall dry start this basically correlates with the climate prediction center's forecast but i do think we start to see some storm activity increasing late in the summer so right around maybe late july into august and as well as it's into september that is when i think things start to get more active here across that area so mid-atlantic back through the northeast and also it will be hot so above average temperatures are likely in this area i don't foresee a whole lot of below average temperatures in any of this part of the united states with a very warm pattern ahead with el nino right around the corner and thank you so much for watching make sure to like the video and subscribe if you've not already